So he's a very smart uh, Jaka. He's a very smart guy. You know, when when he talks about India or when he talks about the anti-India statements, he he has a very calculated statements written by his advocates. So he he is very clearly states up the points also, and also sees that he's never catch up in this in in his language. So that was the reason when we take up this issue with uh, Interpol and also with the uh, American government also and the Canadian government also, they said that whatever he is using the language is not as a terrorist, it can't be counted as a terrorist activity. But the otherwise, uh, the reality is that he is the one who is the uh, contention of bone in this case. He is the one who has been funding. Yesterday he announced 10 lakh rupees for the person who has assassinated uh, in Amritsar. So the thing is, he is the man. But yes, surely because he is smart enough to use his language in a very calculated words uh, through appropriate legal format, uh, he is, uh, we, we are unable to tap in through Interpol. But I am sure about the Indian government. So very, there are many things which I cannot disclose on channel. But I knew that what government is doing and what government is supposed to do. And we are sure that you will see in the coming days. But one thing I must clearly say here. Mm. See, we shouldn't give them such so much of importance. I knew they have nothing to say. They have nothing to do. As far as the Indians are concerned, there is no as such idea that they can float in our minds. But they want that they should be on a national channel here in India. And by some default, we are also showing them, but doesn't make a difference. Tell them whatever they want to do, they can do in Canada. But on this bias, uh, uh, India, they cannot do a single thing. No, they no. won't be when able, and they will never to, be able to achieve their agenda. People like Daud Ibrahim and others. Uh, of course, India has been pursuing this matter for a number of years. But I want to know from Vishnu Prakash: Here is a terrorist, an outlawed individual from an outlawed organization, openly saying that he will give ten lakh rupees to the person who indulged in a daylight murder in Amritsar last week. Is that not a crime? Is that not incitement to violence? Surely, wherever he is, uh, you know, UK or Canada, the, it is, isn't it incumbent on the government there to act against a man who is openly inciting violence, calling for violence? Zaka, you know and I know that uh, one man's terrorist uh, is, uh, and uh, the other person may look at him differently. The terrorists uh, are being protected by China, are being protected by other countries. There are there is a lot of politics involved. You know it as well as I do. But let us uh, let me clarify a few things. I think uh, we the, what we are discussing is slightly di uh, different from reality. You know, we have as I know for first hand because I was High Commissioner to India and Canada. Correct. Uh, uh, you know, the visas the uh, visas were given to only those people who were contrite. They were on blacklist for thirty years. What purpose was it serving? So it is not that the government one day said that everything is forgiven and forgotten. It has been very selective. It has been carefully done. And how do, can we say that those who uh, are, sti are still misbehaving or uh, pursuing a nefarious agenda are being let off the hook? They are not. But the world does not go by uh, our desires. I mean, we have to pursue that. We have to continue pressing uh, each and every uh, player. And we have to stay the course. It's not easy. I mean, uh, the, uh, the Comprehensive Convention of International Terrorism, the draft was presented in uh, 96. So, you know, there is a lot of politics involved and it's very easy to say that we should do this and do that. Mm -hmm. I think one has to make haste slowly. Uh, steps have to be taken because in in an incremental fashion, we have never, Achha, by the way, the Khalistani movement, which was so strong in the 80s yeah. and 90s, is, is shadow of itself. So it is not that we went all guns blazing and it happened because there is a fatigue uh, with uh, terror activities or separatist activities. It is a phase and this phase is being handled very maturely and carefully. Uh, as far as funding is concerned, let me also clarify here that the most of the funding is coming from within because they, the separatists, they control the Gurudwaras mm -hmm. and the Sikhs who are pious people, they do not know that where the money is going and this money is, they donate to Gurudwaras and the money is taken away by the uh, Khalistani separatists who are controlling the Gurudwaras. So okay. that is that is where the funding is coming from, most of the funding. So, so Shanti, you want to respond to what Ambassador Prakash said? Yeah, it's one of those very few occasions on which I have some disagreements with what Ambassador Prakash said. I'll make three or four quick points. Number one, to what something which Mr. Sirsa said. 
you can't zaka i think you are doing human service by talking about this because you can't shut your eyes to something which is happening in front of you and expect that it will not happen just because you've shut your eyes so yes please expose what is happening and that is important to put pressure on government to move number 1 number 2 uh, ambassador vishnu prakash says that you know blacklist were there for 30 years and this is a movement is a shadow of itself uh, one of the reasons why this movement apart from the uh, uh, apart from the th- uh, way the punjab police led by uh, mr yeah. kps skill wiped out terrorism in punjab i think these blacklists and and the kind of punitive measures which the government of india took in the past uh did have some impact uh i don't know how much it's difficult to quantify but it did have and please look at the correlation the moment this blacklist go the moment some of these jokers have been you know given visas they've been allowed to come in in a spirit of reconciliation i don't see how you reconcile with terrorists uh you see uh the steady rise of this khalistani movement again to say it is a shadow of what it was in the 80s and early 90s is perhaps true but that shadow is looming large every day and yeah. we are seeing incidents of terrorism rising on a daily basis uh what we need is zero tolerance which means you scrap all visas no visas will be given without proper vetting number 1 you scrap all these uh, uh, pio and oic cards for these characters uh, scrap them across the board and reissue them after having duly verified these people and do it for the families don't do it for individuals do it for entire families all right and number 3 please have a hawk eye on any monies coming into punjab from these sources number 4 please remember one thing that it is exceedingly important it is not good enough to write a letter to interpol uh, and say that you know pa- this pannu fellow is a terrorist yes mm. he is but you have to build zaka a proper case you have to you have to uh, you know make a compelling case that the speeches the monies and the acts of terrorism taking place out here forget forget interpol can you not make a proper case like this with the canadian government or the british government sure uh, with the british it's going to be even tougher because the british have this habit of playing you know uh, these games with india all the time but perhaps it might be a little easier with the canadians but you have to build a compelling case and then there have to be diplomatic repercussions all in right. case this does not happen to say that it's not as easy as it seems is perhaps correct but just because it's not as easy as it seems does not mean that we do not we take not the tough one okay I, i'm going to leave it at that i want to thank all our guests like i said the point of this program is to show what is happening in another country open and blatant anti india activity uh, activity against another sovereign country and i'm very clear in my mind that even violates uh, the basic U- un charter uh, so if the government of india needs to make a case it surely uh, should start from there Uh, but let's see how this story plays out. I want to move on to some domestic political news where the hangama over the Delhi excise policy scam seems to have now taken a fresh twist. Businessman Dinesh Arora, who's been accused in the scam, has moved to CBI court today seeking pardon without any coercion. Uh, Arora says that he wants to become a witness and he's ready to disclose all the facts related to the case. Uh, just a few days ago, the same court had granted anticipatory bail to Dinesh Arora after the CBI did not oppose his bail plea. The Delhi court will now hear the application seeking pardon on the 14th of November. Arora is believed to be a close aide of Delhi Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia and also somebody who uh, benefited uh, in a big way from the uh, from the new liquor policy. Let me now go across to uh, Ananya. What may uh, Dinesh Arora turning approver or turning witness in this case? What may this legally mean uh, for Manish Sisodia? Definitely, Zaka. This is a big development that has taken place in the liquor gate scandal, and uh, we shall remember that if uh, Dinesh Arora turns an approver into this particular case because he was a beneficiary of this particular scheme, he was well aware of all the context and the contentions of this particular scheme. He might spill a lot of beans. Secondly, when he will turn an approver into this case, his uh, status would change from an accused to a witness, and his statements would uh, actually hold more value. and more credibility now thirdly he ha- would have a lot of revelations to make and that's the reason why uh, in fact the cbi would also have agreed that he be uh, turning an approver into this particular case and that's the reason why the central bureau of investigation had moved an application seeking uh, to turn him into an approver but uh, at this point of time if at all the court allows uh, for him to become an approver into this particular case a lot of troubles might be mounting for the aam aadmi party because uh remember that the day anticipatory bail uh, plea was filed by dinesh arora into this particular case the very same day uh, in fact uh, uh, 
uh, Vijay Nair was arrested by the Central Bureau of Investigation into this particular case and particularly uh, the Central Bureau of Investigation had not opposed the bail application that was filed by uh, Dinesh Arora, anticipatory bail application in fact saying that All he right. was cooperative in this current probe and that's the reason why he is now uh, uh, sought, uh, sought for pardon and has said that he wants to turn an approver into this particular case and would okay. co cooperate in that particular probe. All right, uh, we'll leave it at that. Ananya Bhatnagar there with details of uh, this possibility that Dinesh Aroda could turn approver. Uh, the court is yet to take a call on that. Meanwhile, there was an anti hijab protest that took place in Kerala over the weekend. The protest was organized by the Kori Code uh, Islamic free thinkers uh, in front of the town hall in Kori Code City. Uh, during their annual seminar this year, women burnt the hijab in solidarity with uh, the Iranian women who've been protesting uh, since September when 22-year-old Masha Amini was uh, reportedly beaten in custody by Iran's morality police for wearing the hijab improperly. She later succumbed to her injuries. Post this, massive protests have been taking place in Iran where locals are demanding the quashing of the morality police. Neetu now joins us live. Uh, so the question that's being asked is if they are doing this in solidarity with the protesters who have been arrested and against whom action has been taken in Iran, what, what is the position about uh, women who are wearing hijab uh, in India, including in places like Kori Code, where uh, this matter, of course, is also pending before uh, the Supreme Court, whether or not a dress code should be followed in educational institutions? Uh, do the, these women who protested have to say anything about that? This is a protest that was organized by the Kerala Yuktivadi Sangam, which is a rationalist association. So every year they have uh, this free thinking uh, seminars that they organize. And yesterday uh, at the Kori Kod Town Hall, as part of their annual seminar, they said, this issue was burning at this moment. It was timely. That is why they decided to have this protest against uh, uh, the... Uh, in solidarity with what is happening in Iran. But this was a protest that was organized by the Yuktivadi Sangam, uh, which, is, uh, uh, which are the rationalists. All right, Neetu, we'll leave it at that. We'll see how this story plays out. The bigger question also is...